Hello guys, and welcome to another video, and these are my thoughts on Nintendo's E3 Direct. The one E3, and I feel like this was definitely the best E3 Direct since 2017. I only thought it was slightly better than 2019, but it was really good. I didn't think it was as good as E3 2017, but there was actually a lot of stuff revealed, and there weren't too many, like, heavy hitters, but there were some really interesting games that I, um, saw here. So, first off, starting it off, it wasn't my most, like, exciting reveal here, but I thought it was pretty cool. We got Kazuya from Tekken in Smash Bros, which was a character I wasn't expecting at all. We were all expecting, like, Crash, Master Chief, Pokemon, something like that, and... It was the only Smash reveal, which I thought was a little weird. I feel like they might save the other one for whatever they're doing in September. But, like, I thought that was a pretty solid reveal, and we're gonna get some more information on it later this month. So, I think that's pretty cool. I think it's definitely not my favorite Smash reveal, um, but it, it was still was interesting. We got a lot of memes out of it. So, next up, the next big announcement we kind of got here was Mario Party Superstars, which is basically the Mario Party game that I've been wanting for a long time, and basically I kind of wanted a Mario Party game that had, like, both boards and mini games from a lot of different, like, the Nintendo 64 and the GameCube Mario Party games, and I feel like Nintendo got the idea that people like these older games now, because we're this is basically clearly inspired by the Nintendo 64 era Mario Party games, and it has like a collection of different boards and mini games. They all look remastered, so it basically kind of feels like a new game that has the feeling of the older games, even though it's kind of like the older mini games and boards, but with the Super Mario Party mechanics and everything. And I really like it. I actually like this a lot better than Super Mario Party, or I would rather have this than have Super Mario Party 2, because with Super Mario Party, we're having all the new boards, mini games, and stuff like that, and then this one, we're getting the older boards and, like, some of the older mini games, and I'm not sure if they're bringing the same mini games from the top 100, but, like, it looks like they're bringing mini games between like Mario Party 1 and Mario Party 10, possibly even Super Mario Party, because I'm, I'm not sure if they just... Uh, I don't really think they bring many, many games from Super Mario Party, because that was just the last game in the series, and they're still going to sell that game alongside this one. And this is actually a really good idea, because I did hear rumors about this next Mario Party game like doing something different, and I was really worried that they were going to like bring the car back and do something different with Mario Party, but this is the type of Mario Party game I want. And it can actually compete alongside Super Mario Party, because this one provides a more traditional experience. And then Super Mario Party has some of the newer minigames, even though it still has a traditional style. And I would basically kind of call this game Mario Party Ultimate, even though it doesn't have that many boards. Um, that's my only problem with it. Like, it doesn't have that many boards, but at least the boards are actually a lot in more interesting this time. And, like, they actually look like the older ones, they have all the characters, they didn't make it look more generic or anything. Like, it's just right there in HD, they look really good, and the Nintendo 64 boards probably were the most unique boards in the Mario Party series. So, and they look way more interesting and less grid-based than the boards in Super Mario Party. And it looks really good in the online... Like, I feel like Super Mario Party was kind of testing the online with that update that came out a couple months ago. I thought that was weird that they did that, like, before this one. So, yeah, we're actually getting, like, um, like, different multiplayer modes on here. You can do, I think there's, like, matchmaking on here, along with friend multiplayer. And then you could also save your, um, Mario Party game. I'm not sure if you could do that in any other Mario Party game. There was probably at least one that had that feature, but it's really nice to have anyways. And, yeah, I believe, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure this is developed by ND Cube, and this is probably what ND Cube was working on, 
So between this and Super Mario Party is kind of proving that they can actually make a good Super Mar or a good Mario Party game, even though Super Mario Party is kind of controversial with its content. Like I mean, it's still really good with its core gameplay and everything. And then this one actually has like the older boards and some of the older mechanics and everything built into it. So I feel like ND Cube is proving themselves that they can actually make a good Mario Party game. And I really like how this game is kind of competing alongside Super Mario Party to be two different kind of Mario Party experiences, even though they're pretty similar. This one just has some of the more legacy content from the Mario Party series. And the next one looks really interesting, and it might actually get me into the Metroid series. And it's Metroid Dread. And Metroid Dread, if you didn't know already, was actually a game in development in the uh, mid to late 2000s. And it was going to be a sequel to Metroid Fusion, but it had it went through development hell like Mother 3, and they ended up canceling it. I, well, I don't know if we know the whole story behind this game, but like, it looks really good, and I can't believe they actually called it Metroid Dread. Like, I'm not really too big into the Metroid series, but I knew about Metroid Dread and everything. I might not go too much into the gameplay here, because, I mean, I'll have to see more of it and then maybe play more Metroid games before this one, before that. But I definitely want to get into the Metroid series with this game, and it looks really good. It's developed by Mercury Steam, which developed the Samus Returns remake on the 3DS. They're also releasing a new Amiibo alongside of this, too, actually which has the uh, Samus from the game, and the Samus colors look really cool. And they also have the EMMI Amiibo figure, which is, I think, one of the characters or um, enemies from the game. And they also have a really cool special edition. I might actually get that, because um, even though I'm not too big in the, into the Metroid series, I think this game looks great, and I'm really excited to play it, and it's actually coming out this year. I'm glad they didn't do another 2022 thing, because I feel like we have to wait wait for every game coming out in 2022, but um, I'm glad we've been getting some games actually coming out this year. And after that, we got um, WarioWare Get It Together. And that was one game that I've been predicting a lot. I did predict the 2D Metroid game a little bit, but I was kind of thinking, oh yeah, that will probably happen eventually. But WarioWare, I was thinking that I had a pretty good feeling that it was going to happen here, even though we really haven't been getting much from WarioWare lately, other than WarioWare Gold. WarioWare Gold was kind of a collection of the older ones, but I heard it was really good. And I should probably check it out before I play this one. This one kind of has a similar theming to WarioWare Gold, except, like, all the micro games are new, and it actually has, like, a two-player, um, kind of gimmick with this game, which looks really nice, and, yeah, it, I really like how it looks. I feel like it's a little different, because you're actually controlling the characters doing the micro games, rather than just doing the touch screen or motion controls doing the micro games. So I think it looks really cool, and I I kind of like the cha how they're changing things up and making it a little more unique, other than the other WarioWare games. I know we I knew we were gonna get an original WarioWare game rather than just like a collection of the other micro games. As good as WarioWare Gold was, um, like it, it was still a collection of other micro games. I feel I felt like that was kind of fitting for the 3DS, but I think it's good now on Switch how we're actually getting an original WarioWare, um, and that's one game that a lot of people, myself included, have been wanting. And we're also getting a port of the Wii U game Fatal Frame Maiden of the Black Water, and um, that looks really cool. It's actually a uh, Nintendo published game, I believe. Um, actually, it's being developed by, um, Koei Tecmo. I, that's kind of, that's kind of interesting. I thought Nintendo owned the IP and everything. Um, yeah, I might be wrong on that. I think I've heard that from somewhere before, but it's kind of a Nintendo exclusive thing. It's not entirely, like, a Nintendo published game or anything, but, um... Yeah, I think it's really interesting. I'm not sure how much it will cost, um, and I really hope it gets a physical version. So, it's nice to have another Nintendo exclusive that's not just, like, normal, it's more of like a horror game, which is really interesting. And we did get some representation from that series in Smash a little bit, so it will be interesting to see that game. And next up, 
we got Advance Wars Reboot Camp, which is a remake of the first two Advance Wars games. And that was unexpected. I was not expecting anything from Advance Wars. And I thought that looked really cool, and I don't I don't know when the last time we got Advance Wars was, but it's been dormant for many years. And a lot of people have been wanting a new Advance Wars game. It is going to be $59.99 or $60, but it does look great. I think it looks really good. And, like, knowing how people have been wanting it so long, and they're finally giving it to us now, it looks really nice. I think Intelligent Systems will be developing this. I'm not, it just shows the publisher on the website. But I'm pretty sure Intelligent Systems will be um, doing this along with WarioWare. So, because they did do both series um, normally. So, it's really nice that we're getting another Advance Wars game. I feel like Nintendo, during this E3 presentation, I feel like their main objective was kind of like bringing back a lot of series that we haven't seen in a while. Or we really haven't been get getting games consistently from. Just kind of knowing that WarioWare is now a consistent series again, like how that it hasn't been like that in a while, I think that's really good. So I'm glad we're getting Advance Wars. And then next up, we're getting Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity DLC um, Pulse of Ancients. That looks really nice. I'll have to look at it more. I don't really think we got too much um, information from that, but I'm really excited. I'm pretty sure I'll be picking it up. I just want to see that trailer again, but it looks really nice. It's going to have like new characters, weapons, and different things, and I'm looking forward to that, and I believe when you buy the DLC, you get both packs, and I believe the next one, I'm not sure when it's coming out with the next DLC pack, but I'll have to see. I'm not sure if it's like something like in September or something like that, or earlier, because um, the second DLC might be something they will show off in the next Direct, because I, I have a feeling they're kind of setting things up for another Direct, especially with Smash. And then they showed um, a little bit of Skyward Sword HD, and now I know that I'm not getting the game because they're not adding anything else to it. I mean, yeah, I, like, I think a lot of people already know how I feel about that game, and um, pretty similar to how a lot of people feel I'm not buying a... Wii game again. Well, I don't have it, but I'm probably gonna get a Wii. I'm probably gonna get the Wii version or the twenty dollar one on the Wii U. I might get the physical version. I heard the physical one's going up in price, but it's probably not as much as the one on the Switch. So I'll probably check it out. And then something really interesting. Um, I wasn't actually thinking of this when I was um, doing my thirty fifth anniversary discussion. They're not doing as much as I thought for the 35th anniversary, and it's not as collected as the Mario one, but I still feel like we have a decent amount of content. As much as I don't like Skyward Sword HD, at least that counts as something for the 35th anniversary. And then they also have this um, Hyrule Warriors uh, Age of Calamity DLC, and then they have this, and I guess Breath of the Wild 2 can technically count since that's, that's coming out next year. That's only a little bit after the 35th anniversary of Zelda. So we have the Game & Watch Legend of Zelda, which looks really cool. Even though it doesn't have the, the Zelda game for the Game & Watch, it would have been a dual screen if they did that. I still think it looks really nice and it has um, Link's Awakening, which is one of my favorite Zelda games because I like the original and the remake and I really like how they have it on there and since I'm a big Link's Awakening fan, I'll probably pick this up. And I do like the original game too, I don't like Zelda 2, I just, I tried to play it but I don't like it. I do like the original Zelda 2, um, also, um, or well, the original Zelda, but um, I feel like that's a more pick up and play kind of Zelda game. I feel like one of the only games in the series that's kind of pick up and play, because I feel like most of the other games kind of, you have to sink in and play it for a while, even though you can do that with the original Zelda. I feel like the original one is the most pick up and play out of the series. Well, I guess some of the multiplayer games like um, Four Swords Adventures could be kind of like that too, but um, I feel I really like how they're having three games rather than two. I feel I really like the um, Game & Watch Super Mario Bros, but I feel like this one is slightly higher quality with the things that are going to be in it. And I really like it. I do like the Game & Watch game that's being included too. I think that's pretty cool. Not just ball with Link's face on it. I think the um, Furman is a little better. Um, so I think that's nice that we're getting that. And finally, we're getting Breath of the Wild 2. Well, I'm still calling it Breath of the Wild 2 because we didn't get another... Um, we didn't get a title for it yet, but it looks amazing! 
but like we have floating islands and I'm pretty sure a lot of the terrain is different from the original game too. They're probably changing a lot of things up. There's new enemies and there's new um, new things for the story too. And I'm not sure exactly if that's Ganondorf who's in the trailer and everything. Something happens to Zelda, like she falls into a pit and Link's just flying around like in Skyward Sword, which looks amazing. And he has like this new hand ability that can, I think that might be the replacement for the Sheikah Slate. I'm not sure if he had the Sheikah Slate in the trailer, but I feel like he, there will be some features from the Sheikah Slate on that and there will be completely new features on here. I don't think they're going to completely get rid of like some things like stasis and magnesis. Those are like core elements of uh, Breath of the Wild. And I, I really feel that will probably in be included with the arm thing and everything. And I wonder if that arm thing will be linked just like fusing with the Sheikah Slate, which looks really interesting, or it might be something completely different. It might be something kind of similar to the Sheikah Slate. Um, we'll just have to wait till next year and we, well, we might get more information later this year, too. We, I have a feeling, like, maybe at the last Direct of the year, like, around September or something, we might get a title and some more gameplay, maybe even a look at the story. So, I'm not sure when next year it will happen. Maybe, like, I'm not sure if March is too early, but the, the game does look like it's almost complete now. Because we got, like a solid story going on there and then we have like all of these floating islands and everything it probably doesn't take too long to build the map and since they're already building the map they probably have all the mechanics and elements out of the way i really hope they bring dungeons back they didn't show shrines at all i mean i really like shrines and i really hope they return but i and also the divine beasts were good too but um they didn't show any shrines or divine beasts so i feel like there's hope for dungeons so, anyways, thank you guys for watching this, um, kind of, like, kind of impressions video. Um, I really enjoyed E3 2021 with Nintendo. They definitely won E3, and I really like what they showed at the Treehouse, too, with the extra gameplay and everything, and, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. So, yeah, one more thing that I forgot that I want to mention real quick is I really like that Odyssey stage in Mario Golf Super Rush that they're adding. I really hope they add it soon, and Cappy would be a nice playable character. We're one of the Odyssey NPCs, too. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, and make sure to check out my Discord server and Twitter if you want to. Goodbye.